here we go, off the rails. Don't you know it's time to raise our sails? It's freedom like you never knew. Don't need bags or a pass. Say the word, I'll be there in a flash. You could say my hat is off to you. Oh, we can zoom all the way to the moon from this great wide wacky world. Jump with me, grab coins with me, yeah. It's time to jump up in the air. Jump up, don't be scared. Jump up and your cares will soar away. And if those dark clouds start to swirl, don't fear, don't shed a tear, cause I will be your one-up girl. So let's all jump up super high, high up in the sky. There's no power up like dancing. Every summer, the island of Sodor is very busy. Holidaymakers love to sightsee, and when the weather is fine, there is no better place to visit. Some people like to go to the mountains, others like the valleys. Children love the seaside. One morning, Thomas was puffing along the line that runs by the coast. His two coaches, Annie and Clarabel, were packed with children going to the beach. Everyone was happy. Percy was taking some trucks to the harbour. Hello, Thomas. You look cheerful. I wish I could take children today instead of trucks. They're the Vicar's Sunday School, explained Thomas. I'm busy this evening, but the station master says I can ask you to take the children home. Of course I will, promised Percy. Later, Percy saw Harold. Sorry, Percy, can't talk. I'm on high alert. Why? Bad weather's due. My help's always needed. Mind how you go, Percy. Ah, off, Percy. As long as I've got rails to run on, I can go anywhere in any weather, anyhow. Goodbye. He set off for the beach. It was a beautiful day, but Edward was worried. Be careful, he warned. There's a storm coming. A promise is a promise, thought Percy, no matter what the weather. The children had a lovely day, but by tea time, dark clouds loomed ahead. Annie and Clarabel were glad when Percy arrived. He was just in time. Rain streamed down Percy's boiler. Oh, he shivered and thought of his nice dry shed. Percy struggled on past coastal villages and into the countryside. The river was rising fast. I wish I could see, I wish I could see, complained Percy, as he battled against the rain. More trouble lay ahead. Oh, hissed Percy, the water is sloshing my fire. Percy's driver and fireman had to find some more firewood. I'll have some of your floorboards, please, said the fireman to the guard. I only swept the floor this morning, grumbled the guard, but he still helped. Soon, Percy's fire was burning well. He felt warm and comfortable again. Then, he saw Harold. Oh, dear thought Percy. Harold's come to laugh at me. Something thudded onto Percy's boiler. Ow! exclaimed Percy. He needn't throw things. It's a parachute, laughed his driver. Harold's dropping hot drinks for us. Thank you, Harold, whistled Percy. Good to be of service, replied Harold, and he buzzed away. Water lapped Percy's wheels. Percy was losing steam again, but he plunged bravely on. I promised, he panted, I promised. He made one more big effort, and at last, exhausted but triumphant, he brought the train home. 
Well done, Percy, cheered Thomas. You kept your promise despite everything. The fat controller arrived in Harold. First he thanked the men, then Percy. Harold told me you were a, a wizard. He says he can beat you at some things, but not at being a submarine. I don't know what you two get up to sometimes, but I do know that you're a really useful engine. Oh, sir, whispered Percy happily.